This is Code.org. I'm currently working on CS Principles Unit 5, Building Apps, Lesson 16, Functions with Return Values, Puzzle 6. Debugging a multiple return statements constraint. We're, go we're going to debug another function that uses multiple return statements. The function is called constraint and is used to limit an input number to a certain range. The function accepts three parameters, the input, uh, the number to be constrained, low, the bound of the range, the low bound of the range. If input is below that value, the function should return the value of low, high, the upper bound of a range. If input is above this value, the function should return the value of high. Okay. Click for a sample input output constraint. Got it. Unfortunately, because of the way this function was written, it does not always work as expected. In particular, because of how low, because of how return was used, some portions of the code of the function never run. Change the structure of the function to use to use the pattern you have been shown in previous exercises. Pattern for functions that return values. Use parameters to provide input. Yep. Declare a variable that will be used as output, yep, to be returned, possibly initializing its value, possibly making it equal to a value is what that means. Update the value in your output variable throughout your program. Return your output variable on the last line of the function. Run the program, identify the errors generated in the output, inspect the logic of constraint to identify the logical errors. Rewrite constrain to make constrain to make use of the pattern for functions that return values shown above. Run the program to ensure it is now running as you expected. Okay, well, let's test it out. And let's remember we want this logic. Let's run it and test it out. All right, what do we got here? So 10 to 20, all right, and limit 5. So it should return the lower limit if we put in 5, and we did. So it returned 10, and 10 is our lower limit, right? 5 is what we put into test. 10 is the lower limit. 20 is the upper. Now for this one, 10 is the limit. The range is 10 to 20, 10. Okay, I do wonder what 10 it's returning. This one, the limit, or this one? But anyways, limit 15, 10 to 20, 15. That looks all right. Limit 20... 10 to 20, 20, yeah, so it's, okay, 25, so this should be above a limit of 10 to 20, so it's going to return 20, and it doesn't. That's a problem. It's returning 25 instead of 20. Let's take a look here. Why would it be doing that? Why is it returning this when this is, let's just double check, what if this is 55, where it said 15? Uh-huh, so it's returning 55, and that's clearly not in the bounds. All right, what's going on? If input is greater than low, return, wait a minute, so it's only checking the, so if you return something, your function is done executing. I can tell you this is a huge problem right here. If you return something, your function's done. So if I were to return something right here, it will never get to any of this code. It's never checking if it's higher than, right? So let's make sure input's less than the high value. It will never do because it said, oh, and I already changed this, it will say, oh, input is greater than the low value. So if my input's 117 here, well, that's greater than 10. So what is it going to return? 117. Because it's going to return. Once you return from a function, that's like saying exit function. So give, the give back wherever you ran, give the code this, exit the function. So it never runs anything after that because the at if statement is true. So there's a few things I want to have happen here. I we do need to flip this. All right, you want to know if input is less than the low value because if so, then we're going to return. Um this is a lot of returns. We're going to return at the bottom. Right? It's not a great idea to put return inside of uh, if statements. You want it once in your function. You want return at the bottom. That's just good programming. This multiple statement thing's killing me too. We're going to have an if else because that's also with how you would want this to work. 
So if it is less, and then you want to check for the problems. So if it is less, let's do a variable like we've been doing, right? So my variable is going to be um, check. I, I don't know. It's the number I'm checking, right? So check. We'll make check, and then uh, I don't need it equal to anything. It's going to just be empty. Okay, so my variable check. Now, if check, so if my input is less than low, well then I'm gonna, re I'm not gonna return, I'm gonna make check equal to low, okay? So check is just gonna equal the low, like we've done before. Now, if my variable else if, and we're doing an else if, because we're not gonna need to check these at the same time. If I hit this and know my variable is less than the low value, well, then I know that I'm going to shoot shoot out the low value. So I can go ahead and return check. Right? So if my input is less than the low value, I want my check to be low, and I'm going to return check. Okay? It's going to skip this other stuff, because if was true, it dropped in, ran this code, and it can skip this other stuff. If it's not less than the low value, I want to check if it's less than the high value. No, I don't. I want to know if it's more than the high value, right? So if it's greater than the, the highest value, that's also when we're going to do check is going to be set to be equal to the high value, okay? And so if it's false here or true here, if it runs this, then it's going to skip the rest. Else right? So else, meaning it wasn't less than the low value and it wasn't greater than the high value, well then our check can equal the input. And we're going to return it at the end. Let's give this a shot. But uh And we can try it a few different ways if you would like. Oh, of course that's going to. And so now it's returning the upper bounds when um, we're out of range. But uh, awesome. Let's keep going. That one was tricky.